Biz Podcast delivers tea news that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Think of us as a digital caravan of storytellers bringing authentic, authoritative, exotic, and exclusive stories to you weekly from the tea lands. Each week, the Tea Biz Podcast summarizes news with the greatest impact on the tea industry. But tea requires far more nuanced coverage than the recitation of production volumes and commodity prices. That is why the Tea Biz Podcast is paired with the more inclusive Tea Biz blog and Tea Journey magazine. The podcast offers a weekly mix of news and features. It is innovative and interactive permitting listeners to conveniently contact reporters at Origin to ask questions that are answered via text messages that are delivered privately to their phone. Welcome. The 2021 tea harvest is underway in Jizhou, the Chinese province with the most acreage under tea. Warm spring weather enabled pluckers in Puan to start about 20 days before the rest of China's tea-producing regions. Here are the headlines. Retail falls a bit. Restaurant reticence. Kenya's tea earnings surged in 2020. And Assam increases daily wages by 30% for tea workers. More in a minute, but first, this important message. Up in the towering Himalayas, Kumal is one of India's lost tea regions. Today, we raise our cups in the name of Avani, a Kumal nonprofit dedicated to strengthening farming communities. Cheers to a brighter future for all. Strong January sales signal a retail thaw in the U.S. despite high unemployment and COVID lockdowns. Retail sales grew by 5% in January, the strongest performance since June, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, which found that 88% of those receiving federal stimulus checks immediately spent the money. Construction and manufacturing workers are returning to job sites as the vaccine rollout gains momentum. Rates of infection and hospitalizations are down 72% from the January peak. Biz Insight. Congress is debating an additional $1,400 payout that will boost sales through the spring and summer. Economists at Bank of America predict stellar growth, but the Federal Reserve cautions that the recovery is uneven and incomplete, with hospitality and entertainment experiencing the slowest return to normal. In the U.S., the National Restaurant Association reports that 83% of American adults say they are not eating in a restaurant as often as they would like. Market research firm Data Central has routinely surveyed consumers on behalf of restaurant owners since March 2020. Last week, 43% of consumers said they still definitely avoid eating out. Fear of visiting restaurants peaked in April at 68%. Ask whether their greatest concern is public health or the economic crisis. 54% said they are more concerned about public health, but that's down from 61% in January. Starbucks, a proxy for the retail beverage segment, reported same-store sales were down 5% in the latest quarter, an improvement over the 9% decline in same-source sales last fall. Starbucks locations in China turned positive for the first time since the panic began. NRA predicts a 10% jump in sales at eating and drinking places in 2021, largely due to pent-up demand. In the meantime, there are still dark days ahead for tea-themed restaurants. Business Insight. Seattle's Queen Mary Tea Room faces permanent closure, writes owner Mary Gringo, 
Gringo has operated the Seattle Tea Landmark for 33 years. Last March, she was forced to close the dining room, and now she is out of options. In Seattle, we're only allowed to seat at a 25% capacity. The Queen Mary Tea Room is located on a hill with no available space to do any outdoor dining. We're so small, it just really doesn't make sense for us to open unless we are at full capacity. We've shut off our phones, our internet, stopped the garbage, just about everything. It's all we can do. Our tea emporium across the street from the restaurant has remained open. We've built a small deck and started serving cups of tea to go and crumpets. We started a GoFundMe campaign to ward off a permanent closure of the Queen Mary Tea Room. Donors have since contributed $30,000. The clock is ticking. Kenya was handsomely rewarded for a bountiful 2020 crop that filled the global gap in black tea exports. The Kenyan Tea Directorate reports more than $1 billion in sales, an increase of nearly 3 billion shillings compared to 2019. Lockdowns curtailed India's harvest and logistics hampered black tea suppliers globally, enabling Kenya to export 518 million kilos last year, up from 497 million kilos in 2019. Black tea production globally declined 2.5% in 2020, according to the Global Tea Digest which writes that the bulk of that decline was in India, which was down 135 million kilos for the year. Business Insight Pakistan previously favored Indian black tea, but political tensions over the Kashmir region virtually halted trade. Pakistan purchased the largest quantity of Tenya's tea, followed by Egypt and then Russia. India Tea sold to Dubai for re-export still finds its way to Pakistan in blends. Last week, garden workers in Assam received a 30% increase in wages, equivalent to 70 cents, raising their daily rates from $2.30 to $3 per day. The union leaders representing garden workers say the 50 rupee increase is insufficient. Wages are an issue in the state elections this year. Congressional leader Rahul Gandhi promised an increase to 365 rupees, the equivalent of $5 per day, if the ruling BJP party is re-elected. Separately, the federal government announced a 10 billion rupee proposal to improve the welfare of Assam's workers. Business Insight Tribal workers comprise 17% of Assam's population, a deciding factor in 40 of the state assembly's 126 seats. The long overdue increase dates to 2017, when a wage advisory board recommended an increase to 350 rupees per day. Tea is labor-intensive, with wages accounting for 65% of the cost of production. The domestic price of tea rose in 2020, giving growers additional leeway, but many argue that the colonial-era plantation model is failing. And now, a word from our sponsor. Q Trade Teas works with tea purveyors at every scale, from promising startups to the world's largest multinational beverage brands in the hot, iced, and bottled tea segments. With U.S.-based formulation, blending, and packaging services, Q-Trade can help you innovate, scale up, and grow your specialty tea brand. For more information, visit our website, qtradetees.com. This week, T-Biz visits London for a chat with David Veal about the European Speciality Tea Association's newly launched training program for tea professionals. And we travel to India for a discussion on the future of handcrafted specialty and indigenous tea. The tea industry lacks a good, consistent, authoritative, recognized educational program. 
that offers a universally acknowledged certification, writes David Beale, executive director of the European Speciality Tea Association. TBiz asked Beale to explain what makes the association's new training program unique. The aspiration of our program is that not only knowledge and skills, but professionalism and passion will be stimulated by those participating in the program and that the overall results will be an ability and desire to buy, brew, serve and promote better quality tea and in so doing educate consumers and encourage them to experiment with new and different teas. You explain that courses are founded on collaboration. So this collaboration is being delivered in two ways. Firstly, by working with a wide number of recognized industry professionals using their skills, knowledge and experience to create the curricula for the various modules. And secondly, by delivering these modules and the resultant certification in, in partnership with existing high quality individual tea educators and trainers, as well as with existing successful schools and academies. Students developing their knowledge and skills will be able to add European Speciality Tea Association certification to their CVs and therefore enhance their career progression. And conversely, those recruiting and promoting within the industry will be in a position to demand European Speciality Tea Association certification from their staff and indeed sponsor their staff to become certified in the relevant disciplines. Of course, this will only work if the quality of the content and the delivery of the modules is consistently high as well as relevant. And we're absolutely certain that this model, based on working with industry leaders, will be successful. To enroll, visit specialityteaeurope.com. Tea consultant Parag Hadibarua writes that higher value teas are not easy to make. It takes a lot of love, he says, a lot of dedication, a lot of experimentation. You've got to first learn the art of making these teas with love and then move slightly more mass market. The Indian tea industry has for long been about two types of tea, CTC and Orthodox. But in recent years, we're seeing the emergence of the speciality tea segment, which includes new tea types and handmade and artisanal teas and also wild and indigenous teas. This is Arvinda Anantraman in conversation with Parag Hatibarua, who works closely with these teas and their makers. India traditionally has been a mass consumption market, right? People, particularly the new, uh, the millennials, they are experimenting and they wish to experiment on other tastes. There has also been uh, a fair bit of disposable income, if I might say. Uh, so people are trying uh, a new kind of teas. This is one of the reasons where speciality tea has come up uh, in India. More so of, uh, most speciality teas, as we might put it, whether it's white tea, whether it's green tea or yellow tea, uh, these are uh, largely from China, Korea or uh, Japan. Now, whenever we wanted or, or the Indian um, Indians wanted to try these teas, we had to bring them in from, uh, export them into, into India. Teas in Japan or China, these, are, these become very expensive. So there had been a few pioneers in the speciality tea segment who uh, started to work on special or speciality tea, if I might put it in that sense, uh, which is not orthodox or CTC, not necessarily black tea. Now there have been teas from Manipur, which are coming out, which as uh, you well know Forest Peak uh, has started to do some very good work. Raj Barua from uh, from Rujani, mind you, Raj, a friend of a uh, friend of mine. I'm sure he's a friend of yours too. Yeah. So Raj has been uh, doing some very good work in terms of uh, speciality and indigenous teas. Donny Polo, which uh, I work with very closely, it's like home. It's, it's an experimental station for for me. We've started uh, in a very small way uh, to experiment and trying to bring out these. Uh, Speciality teas plus indigenous teas to the market. I'm very proud to say that these have been very well received. I teach uh, tea, as you well know, and I have uh, 34, I've had 34 international students. A lot of my students are in the tea business. They work as uh, tea sommeliers, some work as tea tasters in international uh, tea firms. They have shown a lot of interest in indigenous teas. In fact, uh, 
follow up i have sent follow up to greece i have sent uh, follow up to uh, america i have sent follow up to canada silver needles uh, we've also made some bai mudans golden needles even uh, manipur uh, fives and smoky and uh, very well received and uh, gives me a great pleasure that uh, you know there have been uh, reorders again and again asking for such teas here and again um, when i say orthodox we are making a lot of handmade uh, tippy uh, orthodox which is very very well received because it gives you the traditional uh, strength and maltiness plus because of the tips it gives you that flavor and the the flowery uh, kind of flavors so yes it has been very well received there is a market and it's growing how does this segment fit into the larger indian tea industry it's a very micro uh, industry because uh, uh, for the for the larger tea industry it's it's the bulk tea which uh, makes money oh you know that's how they sell but there is there has been a shift f- uh, uh, from well a very small little minuscule shift but nevertheless uh, people when they've seen uh, the kind of uh, demand for it the kind of popularity and also very interestingly the price realization in the auctions golden needles at uh, 70000 rupees in the auctions uh even silver needle at 20 25000 rupees in the auction so uh, you know uh, the auction is a barometer it's the best uh, publicity for any garden or mark so it has been noticed the demand is a is a little slow because it's we are still uh, very it's a nascent uh, market but uh, as it uh, as it grows i'm sure a lot of people will uh, try and shift into a uh, higher value teas but as i said earlier higher value teas are not so easy to make it takes a lot of uh, know how would be the wrong word it takes a lot of love a lot of dedication a lot of experiment so you've got to first learn the art of making this with love and then move a little more into a slightly more mass market why indigenous tea in a, in a in a village in arunachal when i was just walking around and i saw they making drying some tea so i even happened to ask uh, well omak was there my friend great friend omak and i we were just walking around and so i asked uh, what is this this is uh, this is tea i said uh, omak where is this from this is the villagers make it so how do they make it so then we walked to the forest and we saw these tea trees so they pluck these tea trees they chop it with uh, a dao mm. uh, with the machete uh, sun dry it that's a traditional tea so i actually asked them what do you do with the tea do you do you sell it is it a, no we don't sell it we the village drinks it so i said what what uh, if if you can't sell it is she said so we feed it to the pigs then it's our duty because uh, if i uh, cannot take this out this traditional indigenous tea will be lost to his in history and uh, that'll be that'll be tragic what are the roadblocks in promoting and creating a market for specialty teas creating a tea is one thing selling it is another so the the biggest challenge that uh, i find or uh, in my interaction with uh, so called small uh, marginal or small tea uh, makers i won't call them small tea farmers because that will go into you know uh, green leaf but small tea makers is um, finding a market for it they are small uh, they do not have the capital to uh, create a marketing team or you know what it takes to market teas so that's probably the biggest hurdle they have a lot of teas uh, but uh, then again you got to sell it and you have to bring it out to the modern tea drinking world mm-hmm. which uh, again is number 1 in india and uh, the challenge and it's my dream to take it to the global uh, tea drinking world Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of tea biz journalists and tea experts? Contact them direct through Subtext, a private message-based platform. Avoid the chaos of social media and start a conversation that matters. 
Subtext message-based platform lets you privately ask meaningful questions of the tea experts, academics, and tea biz journalists reporting from the tea lands. You see their responses via SMS texts, which are sent direct to your phone. Visit our website and subscribe to Subtext to instantly connect with the most connected people in tea. Remember to visit the Tea Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week.